All right, guys, we are here in Toronto getting ready to head on an epic journey across Canada from Toronto all the way over to Vancouver, Toronto Union Station behind me. And as you can see, it is snowing. We are all bundled up and we are expecting lots more snow as we go across the country. So hop on and join us on this great journey on Via Rail. All right, so with our um, sleeper cabin tickets, we do get access to the business lounge. So we came in here, we checked our bags, and we've made our reservations for lunch and dinner for day one of this journey right now. I'm gonna go grab some coffee and try to warm up from that very cold walkover. Good morning. What's your car number today, miss? 110. 110, lovely, and right here with Janet. Me, that guy right okay, there. I have I'll his take ticket, just so Sounds you know. Good. All right. Thank you. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thanks. And you? Excellent. I'm great. Just have a seat in your room and wait for okay. me there. Okay. This one? Yeah. Yes, okay. Hello. I'm with her, yeah. Just have a seat in your room and wait for Do me I pull there. the door or is there a magical hard. way to push, open it? Push hard. Push, push hard. hard. There we go. Thank you. Got it? <laughs> that was tricky. So this is the lower level of the dome car, family style seating here, very comfortable seats down here as well with the table space in front of you.
All right, so if you're looking for some place to relax outside of the room, we are here at the upper level of the dome car, and we're gonna be relaxing here in these nice soft chairs and enjoying the beautiful views. So now we are in the lower level of the park car, hanging out down here. It's kind of like a living room. It's so nice and so comfortable. Um, they have reading lights and cup holders and really just a comfortable place to hang out. Let me show you around.
got they've got snacks, water, snacks in the park car, and also some games right here you can play. Like the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Let's see if I can solve it. Let us know in the comments if you can solve a Rubik's Cube and if you think we can. Allie, can you solve that? I don't know. It doesn't look promising. <laughs> and there's a color missing. Oh, that's, that's like a wild card spot. <laughs> yeah. All right, so of course we are on board and we have got to show you guys around our room. We got a cabin for two. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of what this room looks like. It's a really nice room. We have a bathroom in here, a sink, and then I know it doesn't look like there's beds in here, but there are. So we've got these two chairs here. You can actually move these around, check this out. If you wanna switch the direction that the seats are facing, so that's really cool. Now, when they make up the bed tonight, those are actually gonna be underneath my bed because my bed will pop out of here. Rob's will drop down from up there. We'll show you what that looks like later on. But then the other thing that we have is, of course, a very nice sink in here. And added bonus, we've got drinking water right here in the room. So it's gonna be a tap. It's just for the drinking water. And then our sink water with soap and some lotion as well. And then, sorry about that sound, we do have our own commode back right here in the room, which is awesome as well. It is actually perfect when you don't want to throw on a bunch of stuff in the middle of the night. Oop, the train is moving to when you don't want to throw on a bunch of stuff in the middle of the night and go out into the hallway. It's great to be able to just go to the bathroom right here in a room. There's tons of space here. Even if I'm calculating um, when the beds come down, it's going to be about right here. So you'll still have this nice little hallway right here to move about. So we're going to keep enjoying the views out the window um, and go grab some lunch. But we'll come back tonight and we'll show you what it looks like once the room is all made up for nighttime.
we are loving this room on the Canadian, but this isn't the only place we can sit. We can move these chairs around and sit here and look out the window to the side, but there are two other areas we can go sit. There's a park car, which actually has a bar in it, and then it has a lounge area and a dome above it. So it's like, there's really three places to sit in that car. And there's also a dome car, which has kind of a lower uh, living room style seating area, and then an upper level dome car to sit in as well. So really, on this train, besides sitting in your room, there's five different places we can go sit. So even though we're gonna be on this train for several days, we're not gonna get bored. We're not gonna be seeing it from the same place because there's a lot to go explore. It's a really long train too, so we get our little bit of walk in every day. And uh, I think right now we're gonna go explore and see which of those cars we wanna sit in and watch for a little while now. We are at our first fresh air break here in Capriol, and it is quite chilly out. I think it degrees in the 20s Fahrenheit. So I'm not gonna be out here too long. We're gonna walk around a little bit, stretch my legs, and then we're gonna head to dinner. So I'm looking forward to that. But as you can see, there's still a little bit of sunset behind me. You can't see me very well, but you can see the sunset back there. So uh, we're gonna walk around a little bit here and stretch our legs. We're cool with that, thanks and out. Okay, so we just got back from dinner and our beds are magically made, which is lovely. So we're gonna give you a quick tour of what it looks like once they make the beds. And as I mentioned earlier, the attendant has to use a key in order to move the bed. So um, that is controlled by them. And so they took the two seats that we were sitting in earlier, they fold down some magical way and they are actually underneath my bed. And so this is what my bed looks like. Look at this, it's huge. I feel like it's fairly wide. Um, 
It looks like a like an actual twin size bed to me. And then I've got a basket here. To put my phone. I got a light here and a little shelf up there. And then here we've got an attendant call button, which I don't think I'll need. I hope not. And that's about it for down here. Not a lot. Not too much going on because everything else is out there. And then she's got the ladder out here as well. This looks like a nice sturdy ladder. It's wood and it's got um, these steps. They have it so that um, this is kind of like, I don't want to say sandpaper, but it's kind of, it's coarse so that you're not going to slip on there. Yeah. So that's really good. So these steps are going to lead us all the way up to where Mr. Marmion is. Rob is up in his penthouse. Ta-da! Rob's going to give you a tour yeah. He's upstairs. This is great up here. Look how much room I have. I'm sitting straight up and I still have quite a bit of room. So a lot. I have so much stuff up here. I have this little <laughs> two pockets to hold glasses and my phone. I think I'll put there. I have an attendant call button. I have a light. I have another hook right here to hang stuff. But most importantly, this bed is super comfortable mm. and so much headspace. I can sit up. I can turn all the way around. This this bed is really wide. Like it's it's, yeah, it's like an actual twin size. It feels bed, way it? wider than any mm -hmm. bed I've ever had on Amtrak. Yeah. And I have uh, this net thing, which you know, honestly, I've never fallen into the net so i don't know what would happen it would probably feel weird but let's hope that doesn't happen Seems tonight good. and i have that fan that's still going to be blowing yeah, in tonight you're not so be hot. i really like this up here i also have a little tray over here it kind of concerns me because this lip is so mm. small and the train has been really quite rocking at times i wouldn't put anything like my phone up there or anything valuable because I feel like it would just fall all the way to the floor. So, uh, yeah, this is great. I this this is one of my favorite setups for an upper berth sleeping accommodation on a train so far. All right, we have stopped here at Sioux Lookout. It's only our second 
fresh air break. First one of the day, so we're walking around here, stretching our legs a little bit, getting a fresh air. We only have about 15 minutes here, so well, it's, uh, it's not too bad. I thought it was gonna be colder, so as you can see, I'm extremely bundled up, <laughs> but it's not that bad here. north on this train it is quite cold so they do have hot chocolate on board but you got to make it yourself so I'm gonna go do that right now that is hot All right, they've got nest incarnation that should be good Stir that up. All right. It smells good. Might be too hot. Ooh, on top, but it's good.
we got off here in Winnipeg and we have a longer stop here because the crew changes over. So we have a nice long chunk of time. Um, we have about two hours, but if you, if you wanna get back on the train before the time is up, then you have to do that within the first hour. Otherwise, you have to wait until they do it at nine o'clock. But um, we're enjoying our time here. Take a look at downtown Winnipeg. Okay, we just finished our lunch and we made it to Saskatoon. So we thought we better get some steps in before we get to Edmonton. So we're out here walking on the platform. We got a short-ish stop. What do you think, Rob? That's good, I like it. <laughs> but it is a bit nippy. <laughs> I think the steps count double if it's under I think so. 10 degrees. I think so too. Doesn't like your body have to work harder to keep it warm so you don't freeze to death? I think so. I don't know. Maybe a doctor could tell us in the comments. Thanks.
All right, we made it to Edmonton. It is a little after nine o'clock. Got in a little bit late, but we do have a three hour stop here. So we got off the train. We're gonna walk around. It's not snowing. It was snowing on the way in and uh, see what the station looks like. And then we get back on, we leave here at midnight. So uh, just a few hours to look around now. All right, so we left Edmonton right at midnight, 12.01, and got on the train, woke up early this morning, and we are in Jasper, and we have a couple hours here. They closed the platform, and so we have to stay off the train basically until 9 a.m. before we get back on for brunch. So we're gonna walk around Jasper here. It's so pretty um, as the sun will be rising in a little bit, and the lights are still up from the holidays, so I'm gonna walk around and explore. And as you can see from my breath, it's obviously cold here. <laughs> so let's go see what's around town. been on the train now for four days and three nights and had the same train food quite a bit so we had a chance here in Jasper to get off and get some food from a restaurant so we we picked Kim Hortons and uh, we <laughs> got some coffee drinks and biscuits we're gonna try that out here we had this in Toronto so we already know it's pretty good here in Jasper, just got a little breakfast. Let me explain how things work here in Jasper because it's different than anything else that's uh, ever happened. When you get up at about 6.30 here in Jasper, they do serve a continental breakfast. And then you're supposed to go into town. You can do that from about 6.30 to nine. We just went to Tim Hortons, got some kind of a real breakfast. And then when you get back on the train, they serve, instead of breakfast or lunch, they serve a brunch. And that runs from 9.30 to about 12.30 or 1. So then you have to hold yourself till dinner. So they basically serve two full meals and a continental breakfast on this day. But you do have time to get off and get a, a real breakfast in Jasper. So you can kind of 
plan that out however you want. We chose to eat here at Tim Hortons and then we're gonna eat a late brunch about noon and then also a late dinner tonight. I forgot to mention how cold it is here in Jasper. It is eight degrees this morning. Feels like two degrees. <laughs> but they say it's a dry cold. Uh, that's supposed to make us feel better. I don't know. There's a little bit of wind too. There's a little wind. <laughs> it's about as comforting as when they say it's a dry heat in Arizona. <laughs> not not good. So we're walking back to the train right now because it's pretty cold. I don't know that it's as cold as it was in Montreal when we were there last week. Oh but, gosh. <laughs> but it is pretty cold. So uh, Jasper is beautiful though. You can see the mountain now and we're gonna look at that as we walk back to the train. So this is the exciting part. We are getting ready to head into the Canadian Rockies. Actually, we're sitting in them, if you can see around me. The sun is coming up, and I'm not gonna lie, I am really excited about what we are going to see today. Good morning, everyone. May I have your attention, please? On behalf of your service manager, Lynn Marcou, in DRL Canada. It is our pleasure to welcome you aboard train number one, the legendary Canadian en route to Vancouver, British Columbia. While traveling on the Canadian, our crew is responsible for your safety and well-being. Unsafe or disrespectful behavior towards passengers or crew will not be tolerated. As we depart, we would like to draw your attention to our onboard safety instructions and policies. For passengers traveling in our economy class, we ask that you please take a few minutes to familiarize yourself with the safety pamphlet located in the seat pocket in front of you. Please make note of the emergency exits located in your car. For passengers traveling in our sleeper cars, your attendant will be there to explain the safety features of your car. And in the event of a train evacuation, the onboard crew will facilitate this process. Standing in the vestibule is not permitted. For your safety, you must wear shoes when walking on the train, and all carry-on bags must be stored in the designated area. Please be advised that smoking tobacco, e-cigarettes, and cannabis is strictly prohibited on board the train and on station platforms. Crew members will keep you informed of stops and designated smoking areas along the way. Do not hesitate to ask your crew if you have any questions regarding your safety or other questions related to the train. Local time now is 9.41. Thank you very much and have yourself a wonderful morning. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to welcome you aboard. This is uh, our premiere day as we go through the beautiful Canadian Rockies. Uh, the one thing I just want to point out for uh, new passengers that are joining us today, and also for all other passengers on board, uh, we do ask you to please refrain from using any type of um, sanitary wipes uh, in our toilet system, as our toilet system is uh, coming from the 50s, therefore it doesn't work well. So we appreciate if you do use any type of sanitary wipes, please you put them in our garbages. Thank you very much. We appreciate your co cooperation on this matter. Once again, thank you very much and have a good morning.
give you a little uh, viewpoint of things coming up. Uh, right now we're going to come to uh, the scenic part of our trip where we see a variety of uh, points of interest along the way. We have the Yellowhead Lake, the Yellowhead Pass, the Lake Lake. Uh, we have the Austin Pyramid Falls, the Blue River, Clearwater. We have a lot of places to see it as we continue along during our daylight hours. Right now, uh, we're, if you follow the mile markers on the side of the train, a mile 17.9 will indicate our entrance into British Columbia, that's the Alberta-British Columbia border. It's also known as the Continental Divide and the Yellowhead Pass. Yes. Uh, the Continental Divide is a division of the water in North America. Water is on the uh, BC side flow all the way into the Pacific Ocean and waters on the uh, Alberta side flow up north to the Hudson Bay and all the way to various tributaries into the Atlantic area, drainage area. Right now uh, our, we're at 3,718 feet, 1,131 meters. That's the height of the Yellowhead Pass. It has the distinction of being the lowest elevation path to get through the Rockies, so obviously it was the easiest way to get through to get to the Pacific Ocean back in the day. So at mile 17.9 we'd like to welcome you into beautiful British Columbia, uh, also known as uh, the Yellowhead Pass. The, this border uh, is named after a uh, Métis trapper who plied his trade in this area. As customary people had nicknames in those days, and this uh, trapper was called Yellowhead. In French, it was Ted Jones. So, in honor of his uh, work in this area, we call this the Yellowhead Pass uh, as the English form. Indicate. So enjoy your uh, views as we continue on. Welcome to beautiful British Columbia. Uh, on the left hand side, shortly we'll be coming to Yellowhead Lake and I'll point the, these places out as we continue along. Thank you very much.
that you would see in a Canadian lake. This is a cold lake. Uh, lots of water comes down the uh, mountain and uh, deposits into the lake. We have rainbow falls and thunder falls that uh, provide a lot of uh, water volume into the lake during the summertime, during the spring runoff. And at the uh, far end of the lake, that forms part of the beginning of the Fraser River uh, via the uh, North Thompson River, via the Thompson River, and via the Fraser River. It all empties out into the Pacific Ocean. So again, on the left-hand side, we have the famous Moose Lake, 14 kilometers long, four, or just over four kilometers wide. Moose Lake on the left-hand side. Thank you.
So we've been given lots of different choices to eat and I've really been impressed with the variety of types of meals that we've been offered. This chicken pot pie is absolutely delicious. Um, we've been served hamburgers and different types of pasta and prime rib, but um, this pot pie for brunch today is very good. All right, so we are stopped here in Kamloops. We got in a little bit early tonight and we were at dinner. So we finished up our dinner and we still had enough time to come out here on the platform and check it out, get some steps in. It's actually not that cold anymore, which is really nice. It's hard to believe this, but I'm saying it's only t about 29 degrees Fahrenheit, they said. So that's actually not bad at all compared to the temperatures we've had along the way. Uh, so I'm gonna get a couple steps in here and hop back on the train.
All right, guys, we made it to Vancouver. What a gorgeous ride on board the Canadian. We had a blast. We hope you guys enjoyed coming along with us. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a like, and leave us some comments if you have any questions about our ride. We'll see you soon.